Hello everyone, welcome to the CEO Club. Today we have another very special episode, an exclusive episode with Essen from Alpha. Essen, welcome to the CEO Club. Thank you very much, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm excited for this episode. You guys have got a, a well-known brand. Uh, for people that don't know about Alpha, just explain a little bit about yourself, the brand. What is Alpha? So Alpha is, um, we're a male-only clinic. We're the first male-only clinic uh, in the whole country. Um, obviously, we don't know if it was anywhere else or not, but we checked the country with the first one. Um, so Alhamdulillah, what we specialize in is laser hair removal. Um, we do it for males only at the moment. We do have a sister clinic as well for the females. Um, but yeah, so literally just um, laser at the moment. And then we do, we've started to get into new things, uh, new treatments, hydrofacial. We've started teeth whitening and stuff as well. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that. What Alpha, where does that name come from? That's very masculine. Is that because it's a male-oriented business? It is, yeah. So to be honest with you, my sister, um, she actually came up with the name. Oh. And um, I don't really, I, I can't remember how it came around. I know we did have a few other ones uh, in mind, but then it was, you know, when it's just not clicking right, um, as soon as Alpha came around, we were like, right, that's the one. And you got the copyright the to Alpha as well? Yeah, we're good, we're good. <laughs> we're good. <laughs> yeah, so in essence, uh, you do laser treatments yes. for male only. So if a female tries to book, you just send it to the sister clinic. Yeah, so uh, my sister's got a clinic, um, Simply Smooth, and any females that do call, because uh, we'll get a few, obviously, wanting to know if we do uh, women and stuff. Um, we don't do it within this clinic here, but we've got a whole separate clinic. And when you think about laser clinic, Instantly, I think about full body laser. That's what just comes to mind. Is it specific body parts or is it just the whole body? So we obviously, being Muslims, um, we only do from the belly button above. Okay. Um, we don't, obviously, if we are to do the legs, we don't really do them. But if we are to do the legs, um, we will only do from the knee down. The reason for that is, uh, obviously, from the bottom of the knee to the, your belly button, you have to keep it covered. Um, so for that reason, obviously, Islamically, we don't go into it. Yeah. You get many people that'll just... We do, surprisingly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That one clean shaven You'd be very calves. surprised, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. they've got hairy thighs. Um, I don't even look. <laughs> <laughs> That's bizarre. <laughs> so they'll just get their calves done? Uh, no, so to be honest with you, we don't really do legs. Because, look, we know if we to do from um, the knee down, yeah, it's not going to look the best. Yeah, yeah. Um, so <laughs> we don't really offer it. We don't really offer it. But if somebody really wants to get their legs done, we'll tell them. We're only doing knee down, but uh, majority of the time it's a, we don't do legs. Yeah. Usually it's just from belly button and above. Okay, and uh, a lot of your treatments mainly it's the beards, isn't it? I've so seen yeah, a lot of I'd that. say I'd say around eighty percent of ours, eighty-five um, percent possibly even, is the cheeks, the neck, just cleaning it all up, making it obviously comfortability. Uh, that's the main reason for the guys. I'd say comfortability, not to go to the barbers every week. With the Ustra. Yeah, because a lot of people, they go to the barbers. Um, let's say, for example, you go on a Saturday, right? By Monday, you, it's already grown out. Yeah. So that's where we come in play. It's quite a niche business. I'm, I'm excited to get into this because I've not come across a business like this before. And you said you're one of the only ones. So we were the first in the UK. Yeah. Um, there's not many around. There is a few more that have popped up. Um, but yeah, Alhamdulillah, yeah. we were the first. Mashallah. So... Like I do with all my guests, I just want to find out a little bit more about yourself first. So, government name Essen, but you said uh, call you AC. AC, yeah. So, my name's uh, Isan. <laughs> We're going to have to leave that in, bro. We're going to have to leave that in. We've tried to do a home DIY job with some blue tack. can cut back. Yeah, yeah. No, no, it's fine, bro. L listen, so leave, leave that out. Is that okay? I'll get it away. <laughs> Let's get rid of that. Touch wood, uh, the CEO club is staying strong. If that falls, yeah. then, then we've got a problem. Then we'll go again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, then we'll go again. Uh, but yeah, that's a little blunder. So, government name, uh, Essen, and yeah. your nickname is AC. Everyone knows me as AC since secondary school. Yeah. Um, to the point, sometimes even my mum and dad will call me AC. <laughs> and you create like a little brand. Is that just a reason for AC or is it just... No, you know what? To be honest with you, the name come from... I think it's one of my mates. You just said one AC. Mates, yeah, one day... Um, it's similar, Esan, AC, and then yeah. I don't know where it's come from, but now we see the AC, how everyone just says air conditioning. <laughs> yeah, air conditioning. Well, it's like a brand though, because I see your TikTok videos and it's like uh, AC's in the house, AC, they say all the comments are always uh, A little AC. bit, yeah, there's a running joke yeah. within What's the family. What's that? Um, so when I first started doing the TikTok videos uh, for obviously Alpha, my, my kind of, not even a slogan, it kind of just come around where I'd say, oh, it's AC from Alpha. 
and then the family have just got onto it, and <laughs> now everything is just AC from Alpha, AC from Alpha, AC from Alpha. <laughs> so it has become a little bit of a brand in you a sense. Just yeah. Created a whole brand. That's good. It's a little personal brand for yourself. So a little bit about yourself. Then talk to me about you. Then what uh, you grew up in Bradford. Yeah. So uh, born and bred Bradford. Um, I love it. I love Bradford to death. Uh, I do say sometimes that I say to a family and stuff that you know what. I'm gonna move. I'm gonna go to a different city, a different country, or somewhere, right? And um, the family always say to me, "No, you're not going. You no love Bradford too much." Yeah, yeah. Born and bred, yeah, I love it. See, uh, that's good because we're trying to push Bradford. You know, it gets a negative stick from time to time. Yeah. People always always have a stigma against Bradford, so we're trying to push entrepreneurs like yourself that are doing amazing things for the city. Yeah, alhamdulillah. Um, you know, I've been watching you guys for a while, and I think everyone that's been on. I, I love the, the kind of narrative that you're pushing, the theme that you're pushing. Because um, Bradford is, I think we had a conversation about this before, and, right, where Bradford has a lot of serious people. Um, but people just have, anyone out of the city just has a bad <coughs> thought. As soon as Bradford comes in, it's always stuff that obviously you don't want to be associated with. Um, but we have some serious, serious players here, serious entrepreneurs, um, really, really smart people. Um, and especially like businesses and innovative ideas it's unreal yeah i think a lot of them are camera shy aren't they they don't want to come on camera that's the problem <laughs> <laughs> but the guys that do want to come on camera are like the more the clownish kind of bantry yeah. kind of guys so yeah. that's why it gets that stick unfortunately unfortunately it is the case yeah but it we, can't, we can't help them but we don't claim some people <laughs> <laughs> no shots fired yeah, yeah no shots fired <laughs> <laughs> no no names no names there yeah. well so you grew up in bradford uh talk to me about your childhood what was life like what were you like as a child um, so childhood, primary school, nice and easy. It was just rolling through life as a kid. Um, secondary school, it did take a bit of a hit. I wasn't the best of kids. Um, I went into. It was just you know what it's stuff that I look back now and I just I I regret doing a lot of the things that I did. Um, just in the fact of you know what I made it, teachers' lives hard um, and especially like my mum and dad, it, it couldn't have been easy for them. Um, I was getting into fights every other day. No stuff like that. It's just it wasn't the best. Typical Bradford lad. If you're you're falling into that little stigma again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what it is because, like obviously yourself, you're from Bradford as well. You'll know it's very easy uh, to be influenced by other people's behaviours and stuff like that to the point where you start becoming a person that you don't really. Obviously, it's not a good, a good thing. You go to uni or? No. So from secondary school, um, I actually got kicked out of oh two wow. schools um, for fighting. Yeah, 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 yeah. They were both for fighting. Um, and then I went to a pro. I wasn't allowed in any school within Yorkshire. No yeah, way. Any like school? Any school within Yorkshire. It was, yeah, it was bad. So they just kick you out and they say you're not allowed in any school? Yeah, so it was quite bad in the sense that um, I didn't manage to sit any GCSEs. Um, I got maths, GCSE, and French. That's it? Yeah, that's literally because I sat it the year early in year 10. Um, but year 11, I didn't say no GCSEs. Um, I got kicked out firstly, first school was year 10. And then I went to my second school, which, um, I got, I only lasted less than a year. Uh, in year 11, I got kicked out of there. And the teacher actually said to me, he goes, I'm gonna make sure you don't sit no GCSEs. Which he was right, you didn't. It's quite vindictive, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it was, uh, he wasn't the biggest fan. No way. So you, so you didn't sit no GCSEs, left with maths and French. Yeah. That's and that comes in handy. Ask me some of the French now on all of those bonjour. Bonjour, see you play. Yeah, yeah. I don't even know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you get kicked out. You got no GCSEs. You can't go to uni then, can no. you? No A levels, no to, uni. To be honest with you, I've never really been. Um, obviously, some people are book smart, right? I've never really been that guy to look in a book and sit there for hours and hours and hours, um, memorizing and revising and you know doing all of that stuff. I'm, it's just not been me. Um, my attention span. I look at it for. A minute, like two minutes at most, and then it's like, no, I can't do it. I'll go on to something else. And then, you know, as you do, your mind just wanders off, and before you know it, you're not even thinking about the first thing again. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's literally how it went for okay. them years. And then from uh, secondary school, I went to a Peru. Uh, I was at Peru for about f four or five months. What's boss Peru? Peru is basically a behavior management school. Right. Um, where all the bad lads, in a sense, go. Um, so I was there for about five, six months. And then from there, um, I went and did joinery in college. My family at home, obviously they know what I'm like. Um, 
and they kind of pushed me in the direction of joinery. Um, at home, I love building wardrobes and you know stuff like anything building and um, stuff like that. I was I used to enjoy it, yeah. so it was a case of my uncle actually said to me, right, I think you should go to joinery. Um, so I went ahead with it. I went to college, Bradford College. And luckily, the two uh, Bradford College got two different buildings. I don't know if it's got any more, but um, all the joinery, electrics, all of that side of things is a separate building to your your normal Bradford College. Um, so luckily, I wasn't around like all my other mates and stuff like that. So yeah, it was good to kind of get that uh, step away from everyone else. Um, and then I was at joinery, doing joinery for two years. Uh, within that second year, I got apprenticeship uh, to work for a company in Belden, a really good company. Um, we did oh, we did some serious houses there. Um, there was, you know, Gareth Southgate, the yeah, yeah. ex-football uh, England manager. We did a uh, wardrobe for him. We did loads of different bits. We did it for rugby players. Uh, so I was there for a while. And that was, it was good. It was very good, but I realised I didn't enjoy it. At the start, it was fun, you know, something that when it's, it's just a hobby. Yeah. Right. And it's not a chore in a sense. Um, the hobby wise, it was wicked. I used to enjoy it. When it became a chore, when I was having to, to go every day, uh, I think it just got a bit too much and I didn't enjoy it too much after that. So that was like your main nine five job? Yeah. 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 So uh, it was an apprenticeship. Uh, it was, I used to get up at seven o'clock in the morning, catch a bus, um, head over there to Belden, which is around 20 minutes. Yeah. Um, and then all day there, I used to be with my big work boots and my big bag, and yeah, it was quite tough. And then what happened from there? So you you working there? That that's when you start to earn money, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was uh, the initial point of earning money, uh, actually getting into the working life. And before that, I used to help my uncle out here, there, you know, just as you do. Um, but yeah, that was the first real point of getting into a working life. And then how do you get into business then? So what what age are you now when you're doing joinery? Uh, so at the time I must have been uh, college, what do you be, I think, yeah. 17? 17, 18. 18, something like that. Um, so yeah, I was doing that. I did that for about two years. Uh, for about, yeah, I think, no, sorry, I was working there for about a year. Um, just over a year. Obviously, I'm, at this point, I'm just learning, learning everything, picking up the trade. Um, but it just got a bit much. And then after joinery, I decided to leave that. Um, I was doing nothing for a while. As you do, as a young lad, uh, was... 17, 18, 19, that kind of thing, you decide to chill. Just uh, chilling. Yeah, yeah, so just chilling um, with the boys. Uh, go out in the morning, just chilling all day, and then come back late at night, um, that kind of thing. And then from there, um, one of my uncles got me into uh, co-op. And then retail. Yeah, into retail. And you know what, retail was, I, I recommend everyone uh, to do retail at some point in your life because the skills you pick up from retail is unreal. It's yeah. wicked. So do that just looking back at that area in your life where you're just chilling out and you're just wasting time and you're just chilling out with the lads every day, looking back on it now, because there'll be a lot of listeners that might be going through that phase right now. What would you say in hindsight? In hindsight, I'd say, look, it's good. Having a social life is obviously you, you can't go wrong with having a social life. If you don't have a social life, you lose your mind. Um, but there's a balance. There's a balance with everything you do. Too much chilling, right? And not enough working, for example. Obviously, let's just say, for example, you're not earning money. When you're not earning money, you can't pay bills. So then that stops you chilling as well, right? And it'll slow stuff down there. Um, it'll affect stuff at home. So there has to just be a balance. If I could go back, that gap that I took um, where I was just chilling, I would have gone and got a second job. But not a second job, another job. Um, I would have probably gone into co-op sooner than I did. Um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of stuff that, obviously, looking back at it now, you'd change. Yeah. There is, uh, unfortunately, I think with the younger generation, especially in some cases, a lot of the young lads, that culture of just playing pool, smoking, chilling, relaxing, not really wanting to work. There is that culture there, isn't there? Yeah, unfortunately, look, especially in Bradford. Yeah. We've got a lot of uh, snooker lounges. Yeah. We've got a lot of shisha lounges now as well. Um, there's so many things that it's just these communal areas for everyone to go. Now, yeah, it might start off good, but certain areas, obviously, there's certain people that go there, um, certain type of people that go there, and then you kind of fall into a bad line. Obviously, if you can keep yourself, if you know what's right and what's wrong, um, you can keep yourself away from it for so long. But at some point, 
you will be around it and it, obviously it's not good to be around certain things yeah no of course so you get into retail first job co-op what what happens then uh co-op was actually really good it was really good um i enjoyed it a lot it was in building once again my uncle was the manager it's not the best thing in the world yeah or he was your manager <laughs> yeah, my uncle was the manager yeah yeah so when when i first joined he wasn't and then my uncle became manager after um they moved stores and they came to us um and that was the point where i was like oh because obviously being in being the nephew yeah i can't get away with anything a lot of people think oh your uncle's manager and you're chilling out and this that is worse it's worse for us it's quite strict yeah, yeah it, so they they had to be obviously more strict with us because it's a, it's to the point where if they're not strict with us yeah. but they're strict with others is favoritism so they used to do it the other way around be extra strict with us um and lenient with the rest wow so yeah we used to get a lot of stick but it was good cuz all the boys were in there uh, my brother was there uh, his mates were there couple of my mates were there a couple of my cousins were there so it was, it was just chilling yeah you're really good so you just enjoy that retail experience and then were you st- did you always have an inkling that you wanted to get into business or was it just at that point um, just earn income no at the point it was just earn income it, at the point it was literally just keep myself busy yeah um get a bit of money and then you know i was still in that chilling mindset so even after work just go chill uh, whatever it is um it's just nice and easy and then let's say from being in co-op slowly slowly you kind of work your way and you kind of realize certain things you obviously within being retail you see a lot of different people you meet a lot of different characters and you can kind of see the people that have moved further in life compared to the ones that are exactly where they were 5 yeah. 10 years ago um so that was a big eye opener that was a big eye opener uh, in the sense of what do I want to do going forward keep in mind like within my family we are not businessmen yeah and my dad's a taxi driver before they were a taxi driver they were working in co-op for 20 some years your dad worked in co-op as well my dad worked in co-op <laughs> same time yeah 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 my dad uh, was it around the same time or just after my dad oh, were you working there once your dad was there as well no no separate oh. co-ops okay, <laughs> worked the same place dad um, uncle everyone yeah yeah so um if my whole family a lot of my family have been in co-op um it's just a case where one of my uncles went in first and then slowly slowly recruiting everyone <laughs> yeah um but yeah so like my family are not businessmen and um, you know just speaking about your mom and dad there so your dad worked in retail and then he's a taxi driver yeah. was your mom just like stay at home mom? my mom's yeah stay at home wife and um, a, what were they like as parents then were they quite cuz you said you were quite a naughty kid getting kicked out of school were they quite strict with you or what how did they react when you got kicked out of school it wasn't the best obviously as you can imagine but um it wasn't like some people or some parents not not saying anything about obviously how they want to parent the kids um but some some parents do be a lot tougher yeah and luckily it wasn't luckily I was all right um obviously they just say look what you're doing is wrong um you need to change kind of thing but yeah alhamdulillah it was good so quite chill parents yeah quite chill quite relaxed that's probably why you got away with it then i did yeah. it's funny cuz my brother doesn't get away with nothing <laughs> no doesn't it or oh, they're quite strict on your brother yeah, yeah, yeah they were quite strict on him uh, to the point where one day for example i used to have well i say used to have still got him um i used to get lines made right oh, is it like well, the, as a haircut the cut scratch one yeah like, like yeah, a yeah. cut scratch it yeah, was just yeah. one line at the time and um yeah i used to get it and then my brother decided one day you know what i'm going to get it <laughs> so uh, he came back with one like literally just one line is that yeah and my mom goes no nope. said go get go get the reason I'm taking it off no way <laughs> yeah yeah so um yeah he had a mohican and some uh, yeah the line of and then we literally I was loving it cuz I'm there with my mohican and stuff that's interesting uh, yes and um yeah my, my mom said take it off so me and my uncle with the shaver just, just shaved it off yeah yeah just knocked it off well, why do you think they were strict so you're the youngest I'm the youngest so they were just strict on the older brother do you yeah. feel like they had more expectations or what, what, why were they strict on him he's he was a good lad well he is a good lad okay um he's never been in trouble like at school and yeah. he is a straight a student he was yeah, yeah he was i think they put all the eggs in one basket yeah, yeah. so i think they put all the eggs over there and, and is he still a good lad or is he he's still a good lad you're yeah, talking yeah, yeah, in yeah, the yeah. past tense that i was a good lad <laughs> <laughs> so no, he, like, still, he gets over sometimes but yeah as you would do it um being brothers but yeah no no he's wicked he's still wicked he's okay, still wicked i was going to say he's done turn into el chapo so and as he <laughs> no, was a good lad <laughs> right so so you're doing retail talk to me about how you get into business then so you pro- you in your 20s now or? I'm 26 at the moment yeah you're 26 right now so you're in retail till about what in your early 20s or uh yeah I was in retail so I was in court for about 4 years right. uh, and then I pulled out of there 
Um, I pulled out of there and I was going to go start a takeaway with my mate. Well, not start a takeaway. I was going to go invest in a takeaway. Um, it was already my mate's takeaway. And he needed some help. Um, so he kept saying to me, like, come on with me. I need the help, stuff like that. So I went on. Um, I left left work. It was comfortable. I was comfortable there as well um, at co-op. So I left I left the comfortable job yeah. to go, obviously, take this step yeah. in, into something we've never done before. Uh, running your own business and stuff like that. And how, how old are you now? At the time, I must have been around 23. 23. Yeah, and so what made what made you want to get into business then? At that point, when you're working in retail, you got a comfortable life, you're earning income, you got a safe job, you're then chilling out with the lads on an evening. Like, what made what's that click that made you want to get into business? It was it wasn't really a click. I'd say it was more so a case of, um, you know, like sometimes you talk to people and they kind of convince you. Yeah. Um, not obviously in a bad way, but obviously there's a lot of good to, to come with owning your own place and stuff like that. So I think it was more so that, the comfortability in a sense. Um, but I didn't know obviously what I was getting into. So I think I'd say it was the comfortability. Also the money side of things comes comes into it. Yeah. At co-op you can only earn X, like a grand, 1200 quid a month. That's if you're working a good month. Um, with your own business, there's endless possibilities. So obviously the, mon- the money side does come into it, which I think looking back at it now that's a mistake that i'd say i made as well looking more so at the money yeah. than anything else um but yeah and then went on um i was working at the takeaway for a while me and him were together um but it just didn't work out sometimes certain ventures don't work out um within friends i learned a lot i'd say i learned a lot from it um and then obviously that helped move forward as well um so i was there for I'd say about six months. Yeah. Yeah, I was there for about six months. Um, and then, luckily, we pulled out. I didn't invest no money at the time. Uh, it was just about to get to that stage, but luckily we pulled out. And then, uh, alhamdulillah, from there, I was chilling out for a bit. Um, back to the chilling. Back to the chilling. <laughs> <laughs> Always does. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, back to the chilling for a, a bit. little gap year. Yeah, yeah, a little gap year. Um, and then, surprisingly enough, I went back to co-op. You went back to co-op? Okay. went back to co-op. Uh, yeah, it was a point where I just needed something. I needed to work, um, and then I went back to co-op. I didn't go into the same co-op that I was at before. Uh, I went into Denham, a co-op over there in Denham, a bit out of the way, um, completely separate. And then, yeah, I was there for a while. Okay, so you go back to co-op, and then um, how do you get into Alpha? Is that Alpha the next step from there? or uh, Alpha... <coughs> Alpha was not the next step. Okay. So you, it's quite funny because um, after co-op, I was there for, I don't know, another six, seven months, maybe a year. Um, I left again, and then it was to go back to the same takeaway. Flipping hell, bro. You're going back and forward here. I know. <laughs> okay. It was comfortability. Co-op, ta- um, co-op takeaway, co-op takeaway. Yeah, okay. and then back to the takeaway, okay. same thing. Um, it was It was a very good mate of mine. So it was like a second chance kind of thing. Is this another takeaway? Same one. Same takeaway? Same one. With a different person? No, same one. Same person? Same person. Okay. Yeah, it was a very, very good mate of mine. Um, so I thought, let's give it another chance. It didn't work out again. And then from there, that was when Alpha was born. Right, so, uh, okay. So just before we move on to Alpha, any learnings from your experience working in retail and then going to this failed venture of a takeaway and then going back to retail and then back to the takeaway? What would you kind of say you learned from that experience? Loads, loads, yeah. yeah. Um, is trust. Trust is a massive one on that. Um, not just trusting people, but trusting yourself in the sense of to do certain things, w- to know what you're capable of. Um, obviously, there's certain things, certain times where you might think to yourself, I can't do something. But it's not the fact that you can't do it. If you don't believe in yourself. You don't trust yourself to do it. Um, so there's a lot of learning curves with that. So I was jumping into that um, to do it a lot more. There was, I say, with the co-op especially, people skills. Um, yeah, you talk to so many different people, and you pick up how you can adapt to each conversation. Obviously, not everyone is on the same set as you in the sense where, let's just say we're having a conversation, right? But then somebody from out of town comes and they might be on a whole different wavelength 
you have to learn how to adapt yourself to these different people. So that way, it's just not um, they they trust you with obviously certain things as well. So you have to just learn how to change. I said that was one of the biggest uh, lessons I've learned from yeah. everything. People skills is quite important to be fair. Being able to adapt to somebody on any level, yeah. So we can speak to like people from Bradford on a certain level, roadmen on a certain level, aunties on a certain level, <laughs> yeah, businessmen and the corporate professionals we call them on a different level. So yeah, that's a really key skill to learn. So what happened with that takeaway the second time then? Did they just flop? Second time is where I was uh, going to actually invest. Um, and once again, it wasn't my money. At the time, it wasn't going to be my money. Um, keep in mind, I'm just a kid. I'm just a kid who's been chilling his whole life. Yeah. Um, and I think my dad wanted to set something up. So my dad said, look, money's there if you want. And obviously, we don't come from wealth. I know a lot of people do come from wealth. We do not come from wealth. So like looking at it now, at the time I didn't. But looking at it now, I know that was my dad chucking everything they had. Yeah. Any savings or whatever they had, um, they put it all together and they're like, right, okay, cool, we'll, we can do it if you really want. Um, but yeah, so luckily before we did, um, one of my uncles, like a far uncle, um, they're already in the restaurant game, uh, Sharma restaurant. Okay. They've got a few, they've got about six, seven yeah. restaurants. Um, so we spoke to them beforehand. They came with us um, and then it's just the, the price that was on there and stuff like that. Um, it just didn't sit right. So to the point where my uncle said, if you want to put that much money in, give me it. I'll set you up a whole shop yeah, and have leftovers. Um, so luckily, we didn't go to, uh, ahead with it. And then uh, from there, yeah, we just slowly pulled out from there. Okay. Now what happens next? Don't tell me a gap year again. No, no. no it's not <laughs> that. It was funny because at the time, uh, as that was all going on, Alpha was getting born, which we didn't, we didn't realise. So we fell into this. Right. It was... I wouldn't say a complete accident, but it was a, it was by accident. Um, at the same time, my sister wanted to buy a clinic. So this is, I'd say, a couple, few months beforehand. My sister wanted to buy a clinic. Um, we had no idea what laser was. As you can imagine, obviously in the male market as well, as men, we don't, we have no idea what laser is. Yeah. Um, obviously within the female market, they know. They've been doing it for years. So my sister comes to us one day and says, sits the family down and says, I want to buy a clinic. We're like, okay, cool. Um, we said, what is it? She said, it's a laser clinic. At the time, I'll be honest, I was thinking like, laser tag, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> stuff like that. And then, um, yeah, uh, so we just spoke about the clinic, went through it, and uh, it had one problem. There was, it was a mixed clinic. So within my family, we do a lot of burda, obviously with male and female and stuff like that. So um, we agreed, we said, look, we'll, you can obviously buy the clinic. Uh, it's not a problem, but it's going to be a female only clinic, which she was like, yeah, yeah, 100%. Now, what we didn't understand at the time was there was already male um, people going there. There was already males that had paid, uh, prepaid for treatments and stuff like that. So let's just say they had three three sessions left, right, that they've already prepaid for. We can't just get rid of them. We have to obviously run through with the treatments. Yeah. So that's where me and my brother got, uh, came in. Mainly my brother, to be fair, because uh, I was so busy with other things. He, we both got trained up, and then um, she'd obviously clear. She'd be doing her normal work um, within the clinic, and then on an evening, uh, my brother was working an accounting job at the time as well. Uh, so he'd work his accounting job, and then from five six onwards, we'd clear the male clients that were there. Now our whole plan was to clear the male clients. Once yeah. their sessions are done, cool, leave it at that, leave it to her, yeah. um, and then it's just going to be a female only clinic. Um, as we were doing that, it's just we we realized it's just got busier, busier. More people kept asking, and then it, it started off like with the lads, the all the boys. They'll be like, "Oh, you lot got a clinic, you know what? Let me come and just sort mine out." And then it's just sort mine out, just sort mine out. Before you know it, is we've got fifteen, twenty, thirty of just just sort mine out. Yeah. And then we're realizing like it's getting big now. Um, we didn't know obviously how big it would go. But um, my dad kind of sat us down and said, look, what are you not playing up? He said the whole point of buying the clinic was so that she can have it as a female-only clinic. Mm-hmm. Right now, there's still males, females. Obviously, it wasn't at the same time, but it was all within one place. Um, so my dad kind of said, right, you'll have to make a decision. Either stop it, right, all the male clients, forget about it, or go separate. And you split the business. 
Yeah. So player. just before we move on to that side, then I've just got a million questions coming at me. So your sister, was she experienced like before? Uh, how does she get to a stage where she wants to buy a business? Then is she working? Has she got experience doing the whole laser treatment or uh, no, did so she just want to buy a business? She was, uh, she had the time. I think she was working at um, Linfield Mount, just like social, uh, like Is that a mental hospital? Yeah. yeah, mental hospital, just like healthcare and stuff like that. Um, but she was actually going to this clinic at the time. As a customer? As a client, yeah, yeah, as a client. Um, and then obviously, one thing with laser is it's not just, oh, that's my laser lady, or that's my laser person or whatever. Right, you build a connection, Yeah. right? And then um, I think one led, one thing led to another and they, they got really close. Even now they're really close. The um, person that owned the business previously? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The one that previously owned it, they're really close. Um, I think it's just, I think they just got talking and stuff like that. And then the lady that was, uh, that previously had the clinic, she was having some of her own issues. Okay. Um, but it was just a bit of a struggle for her to run the clinic itself and to run a house, uh, running a family and everything like that. So she kind of made the, the decision to say, right, I'm packing up. And then she mentioned it to my sister as in, I'm packing up. It must have just been a conversation. And then it's like, hold on, do you want to buy it? Would you be interested? And that's when my sister's kind of light bulb went off as in, wow, that's I don't amazing. mind. <laughs> that's unbelievable how all uh, all those events turn out to, to yeah. where we are today. So I find that fascinating. And I'm sure the listeners uh, will too. So she's a customer. She's going to this laser clinic. Uh, the business owner decides to sell. She gets the opportunity. And then she has that entrepreneurial flair to say, you know what, I want to I want to buy it. And she ends up buying it. Wow. I rate that, mashallah. Yeah. I'm like, it's, it's, it's a good move she made. Yeah. Powerful. It's yeah. And it move. just shows that yeah, opportunities can come at any point in life where you're a customer at one point and then you're owning the business at the other point. And I think listeners at this point, be interesting to take your take on this before we move on to how Alpha was born. You know how when you talk about buying a business, there's always like people are skeptical, like saying, why would anyone sell a business that's profitable? It's a bit risky buying a business. Any any business that's profitable and worth owning, no why would why would you sell a yeah. business that's profitable? So what would you say to that then? Do you think there are opportunities out there to buy existing businesses oh, instead of trying to build your own? A hundred percent, yeah. Um I think buying a business isn't a bad idea because how how I look at it is, let's just say for example, you've got business, I've got business, right? Um, with your business, it's your clientele, it's yeah. the people you know, it's your network in a sense. Um, now somebody else's network might be in the same business, but their network isn't as vast as yours, so they struggle a lot more. Um, yeah. They don't know how to do social media, for example. Um, there's so many things that come into it, in the sense of, they could be better. Yeah. Now it's not a case of the business doesn't work. The business can work. Any business can work, right? But it's about passion. If you don't got the passion for it, you don't got the love for it, it's not going to work. Um, so especially with like my sister's clinic when she first bought it, the, the, old lady, uh, the old owner wasn't too bothered in the sense of she's got a family to, to feed, she's got a family to run, obviously be a, be a wife and a mother before being the breadwinner. Life gets in the way. Yeah, life gets in the way. So there's a lot of things to come into it. But I, I personally think if buying a business, I know it's a risk. Everything's a risk in life. Um, but buying a business, you sometimes have to take that risk if you believe in yourself. Yeah, and it's an interesting perspective that you're putting out there and it changes your mindset is a business that you're buying might not be really successful, but what you bring to the table with the marketing yeah. and the sales in your network, you might be able to turn it profitable and yeah. it's already got a brand and a name and, and things in place. So it's an interesting perspective and way of looking at things. Yeah, I think it's, you just have to have an open mind to everything in the sense where don't always see the bad. Look at the good, see what you can bring to the table. Like you're saying, bring to the table. Um, what you bring to the table might be more than what's already on the table. Yeah. So it's just certain things like that you have to obviously look at everything. Sometimes it's good to just take that risk. Otherwise, you're going to bite yourself, yeah, you kick yourself every day, uh, maybe a year down the line, two years down the line, that same business, somebody else might have bought it and it's booming. And you're going to kick yourself thinking, I should have done it, I should have done it. Yeah, mashallah. So you guys made a good move as a family. You bought that business. Uh, you then tried to clear out the male, cl uh, male clients for that clinic and then you found a business opportunity within the business. Yeah. That's literally, um, like I said, it was by accident. By accident. Um, when my dad sat us down and said, right, make your choice. Um, <coughs> at the time, 
like I said, we don't come from money. So for us to make that um, that move, it's costly. It's going to cost us another set of machines. Firstly, getting a place, doing it all up. You'll know it's not cheap. Yeah, All these things add up. Um, so at the time, like I said, I was busy. I was busy with other things. Uh, my brother went to a couple of his mates and put on forward this idea. So look, this is where we're at. What are we thinking? Um, they were on it. They said, yeah, cool, let's do it. So they all pulled together what they have at the time. And uh, yeah, they literally put it straight into a machine. Um, we got the another set of machines. All it was laser machines. Um, luckily, uh, my partner now, his uncle had a spot. Right, It was on Greyhound Road. And I know it, as soon as I say Greyhound Road, yeah. you think, oh, good spot. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, it was um, on top of a barber shop, okay. right? To get to the actual spot itself, uh, it was one one small room that we initially had, right? Um, <coughs> to get to the room itself, you had to go into the barber shop, wow. right? At at the back of the barber shop, there was a one door. The door doesn't even open full. <laughs> it opened halfway, right? You have to squeeze past. The barber first, yeah. <laughs> right? And the barber's giving you dead thinking that you're my client. Until then, he realizes no, you're going upstairs. Uh, you so you've got to squeeze through that door, get to the back, go upstairs, right? And then was our door. As as you go in there, um, when we first started off, right, it was a bed and two machines. Just that one little it. room. One room, a bed and the machines. That is it. There was n- there was no flooring. It was just floorboards. That no was it. Yeah, 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 it was. Crazy. It was crazy wow. how it was. Uh, but for you guys, was it just a case of trying to prove the concept, trying to make the business work then? Because obviously, le- this building's beautiful for context. You know, for our listeners, you've got loads of rooms, loads uh, upstairs, downstairs. It's on a main road as well. Uh, at least, like, this is obviously a, a bit more of an investment yeah. and a little bit more of a risk. Mm-hmm. So when you're starting a business, a room like that might not be as nice as this, but it, there's risk and reward, isn't there? Yeah, 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 100% there was risk and reward. Um, from that room where we had nothing in, slowly, slowly we'd start. Yeah. So from having just a bed and the machines, I, th- I can't remember the exact process we went through, but for example, we went, right, as soon as we make some money, cool, invest it back into a TV. While the client's there, they're not obviously bored. Um, cool, next one, get a couch, uh, get a little sofa, put that in. Right, and then when I'm talking so far, it was, yeah, just a two-seater. That's, a That's it. We've still got it, to be fair. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, then after that, it was, right, cool, we need a desk. Oh, we need flooring. Right, cool. As soon as we make some money, as soon as we have it, bam, let's put it straight into flooring. There was points where we're making money, making money, boom, back down to zero. Um, there was times where we're having to put our own money into it yeah. just to kind of cover the costs. Um, and then just slowly, slowly work your <coughs> way into it. And alhamdulillah, by the end of it, that room was wicked. Everyone used to say, yeah, this room is spot on. There was um, a treatment bed. So the machines, a treatment bed. And then it had um, a little rail on it, just a little cover. Um, and even that was branded. Was yeah. Everything has to be branded. Um, then the sofa itself. And then a nice fancy desk. Uh, you had TVs up. You had PlayStations in there. Um, you had everything. Coffee machines. and yeah, yeah, we had everything that we wanted within that spot. So that's quite a good strategy of the way that you're doing it. So you're earning the money and then yeah. you're uh, spending and reinvesting that money back into the business. So that way you're not out of pocket crazy, but you're giving a realistic message about business. And uh, like you said, when you're spending that money and you go back down to zero as an entrepreneur, sometimes that can be disheartening when you are got no money in the bank account or when you start to get you know to five grand or 10 grand, and then it goes yeah. back down to zero. It can get disheartening, but that's a realistic perception of business that you're putting out there. This is it, because look, P- People don't have 10, 15, 20, 50 grand, 100 grand to just chuck it straight into something that yeah. you're not, obviously, you're not established. So in th- the way we've done it is where we go slowly. Yeah, it's going to take longer. Um, yeah, it's going to be more difficult, but it's the way we had to do it. Like I said, we haven't got 100 grand. We haven't got that cash influx um, to just chuck it all up and then, right, cool, we're good to go. So we've had to do it slowly. We had no other choice. You literally started from scratch. 
Humla, yeah, yeah it was. And is a realistic perception of what you're putting out there because sometimes when you think about entrepreneurs or businessmen or whatever, or women, I'm not going to exclude the women, you get cancelled. <laughs> <laughs> businessmen or women. Dangerous. <laughs> yeah, dangerous surgery. <laughs> yeah, rewind. <laughs> yeah, so uh, you obviously uh, on social media, you, you know, you're looking at Lambos and G Wagons and all the glamorous things that yeah, yeah. Uh, people put out there, you know. So that kind of is the realistic uh, example of what it, it takes to build a business from scratch but what you mentioned there about your brother going to a few of his friends I just want to clarify that so how many friends then who, who's the partners who did he go to and who invested in the business so there's four of us four partners there's four of us there's me my brother his best mate and uh, another friend of ours right um, I know it sounds like it works it works beautifully. I wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah. Yeah, honestly, because having, having four partners well, is it's four <coughs> people that love the place as much as you do, that want to put, uh, that have uh, the same kind of passion. End of the day, when it's your own thing, you wanna, you're going to put 110% into it. So it works really well. So four partners, um, obviously that equates to like 25% shares then, doesn't it? Yeah. 25, 25, 25, 25. Some people might look at that and think you're diluting your shares quite a bit, but... For you, for your experience, having four partners, what would you say then? How how has that been? It's been good. It's been really good. Yeah, yeah. Um, like look, like I was saying, we're not businessmen, so for us, let's just say it was just me and my brother. Yeah. We jumped in. We don't know the left to right. Um, one of our partners, he used to own his own business. Well, it, it was his father's business that he took over. Um, so he's already got that business knowledge, right, of everything behind the scenes, all your paperwork. Uh, little things that even we don't realize to this day he still does it where let's just say there's a particular bill that we need to pay that won't even come up but he knows himself is like right okay cool we're at this point we need to do this we need to do this so it's helped move it forward so well yeah and if you have to break down the value that each person brings then have you got like uh, separate areas of the business that each of you cover or do yeah. you just okay so um, I'm all in-house I do everything uh, in-house um I'm the face. Yeah. I'm the face of it. Um, my brother does all the calls, uh, everything booking in. He's basically the guy over the phone, right? Um, the other lad, he he's started to do treatments here as well. Um, we're all we're all trained up, so we can all do it if we need to. Um, so he's started to do treatments now as well, but he deals with all uh, social media management. Uh, we do have a separate social media team as well, but he just stays on top of everything yeah. as a whole. Um, and he also takes calls. He does some of the bookings and stuff like that because you don't realize how how much of a, not a headache, but it's a good headache. It's admin heavy, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's admin heavy. It's re it takes a serious toll, especially when, obviously, these lads are working o different jobs as well. Um, so with that, and then uh, the last... Um, we call partner. him the Mr. Anonymous. <laughs> Mr. Anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mr. Anonymous, like I was saying, he does all the admin. He does all the paperwork, makes sure all the insurances are in place. Uh, literally, just, he, he's the brains. He's the brains behind the whole operation. Yeah. Um, just making sure everything's running smoothly. So you all work together uh, to run the business. And uh, I don't even think we introduced it properly. So at this point in the podcast, so your dad sat you down. He's told you to start a business. Your brother's gone to his friends. You've all pulled together your resources and you've started the first shop in Greyhound Road. But you decided to call it Alpha. Yeah. So um, that's when Alpha was born, in a sense. Um, once again, it was my sister. I th I'm sure it was my sister who got the name. And then um, the font and everything, like the whole logo and everything. We decided to keep it sleek. Um, sometimes less is more. Yeah. Uh, in this case, we've tried to keep it less is more yeah. with a lot um, we did have for example we had this lion yeah. that's that was a part of it first um, okay. and we realised it's little things that you pick up as you go on uh, with certain things like this logo everyone hated it the lion yeah, yeah. so that's not the people uh, like the clients or family friends more so anyone that's doing any work um, yeah, yeah. any banners or any yeah. signage or anyone that's doing any printing or it's anything like that yeah. they all said can't do it yeah it. it's just too difficult so stuff like that you pick up on the way which is wicked you yeah it's a good learning it makes curve. sense we've had that with our banati logo because we went for a really complicated one but mm. then you realize 
trying to get because you know look that little badge it's just to get it into there it, they, they just complain because it's so detail yeah. oriented that's it yeah uh, yeah sometimes when you when you obviously you're building your brand yeah so you you look at it and i'm guessing you guys are the same where you look at anything it, it has to be perfect yeah it yeah. has to be detailed and everything but sometimes like you say it's, it's difficult it's difficult bro. so you and, and that triangle doesn't mean anything it's not like an illuminati no, no, no. <laughs> so that's uh, it's a custom font okay uh, we had to look at different fonts so we right. couldn't find the right one okay. uh, and then we came across this and this was just yeah it just flowed really well right. um, before we did actually have it as alpha and then male laser clinic underneath all right okay. um we had to take it out um i don't know if i should be saying this yeah but oh you had to take it out yeah yeah we had to take it out for copyright or no it was more so, um, let's say, I'm trying to think how to, how to word it. Bro, it's free, f- freestyle it, bro. Obviously, let's just say... Is it sexist or...? Yeah, it could be. Um, let's just say how the world is going. You don't know who's who. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, okay, yeah. Yeah, you don't know who's who. Um, so you can't call... Yeah, so male... The laser clinic was fine. Okay. It was the male factor where it was like, no, you can't write that. Because it's is going towards one market yeah um but then obviously sometimes males aren't males and females aren't females <laughs> yeah yeah that's if that true. makes yeah, sense yeah, yeah that yeah, makes yeah. sense so, so yeah um so yeah it was it was a good mate of ours who actually pulled it up and said look you can get in trouble for that for just saying yeah, male yeah yeah so um can females say females or it's weird yeah because i'm sure there's loads of beauty places that are like female yeah only. i think female only is 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 really weird at the time to what's going on because you got to understand as well male only market yeah it's never been done it's before never been yeah yeah so what? we were so unsure on what we can put on what we can't so we thought you know what just take it all out just take it all yeah, out. yeah yeah just yeah. take it all out make it sure easier be a look because if a female wants to be a male then they can just come in and say i'm a male innit? and then you can't judge them or discriminate against them this is it but yeah can still you can still get that laser done let's talk a little bit about the business now so uh alpha laser clinic um your in the Grey Horton shop right now. Um, what's booming then? How are you building the brand, the business? So, um, at the time, my brother, like I was saying, he was an uh, accountant, so he'd work his normal job. And then it was from five, six onwards, where he'd come in, get his appointments out of the way, um, do whatever we could, right? And then, uh, at the same time, this is where I was getting to my chilling phase. Yeah. Um, so, my brother sat me down and said, look, what are you doing? I said, why don't you come here? We could need it anyway, so you can just run all this. I said, you know what? Cool, I'm not doing it. So I came in, and then at the start, it was it was all over the place, in the sense of um, we didn't have no structure, whereas now we do. Um, but let's just say when we first started off, I I came in full time. Keep in mind, the rest of them have obviously other jobs, main jobs and stuff like that. I had no other job, so I was free. Whether it's nine in the morning. Um, 1 p.m., 5 p.m., 9 p.m., whenever it was, I'm free. Yeah. Right? And obviously it's local as well, so I could always pop in and out, in and out. So we were running it like that, um, but at the t- we was getting days where we'd have one appointment at, let's say, 12 p.m., and then another appointment at 2 p.m., and then another appointment at maybe 5 p.m., and then one at 7. And it's like your whole day is gone yeah. when realistically it could have just been done in two hours. Yeah. Um, so that was, once again, another learning curve. Um, we picked up a lot of learning curves on the way, a lot. Um, obviously, as we've moved forward, we've kind of tweaked everything and set it up, alhamdulillah, a lot better. How are you building the business then? Is it just because of your sister company? Um, no, so, alhamdulillah, me and my, me and my brother, we're, we're very friendly. So we've got a lot of mates. Um, and a lot of the, t- especially starting off, uh, a lot of the boys were like, oh, cool, let me do it, let me do it. And then, Word of mouth. Word of mouth was massive. Um, results. Results spoke for themselves. Uh, especially, imagine, look, if you've come in, right, through a mate, and it's a case of you've had yours sorted out, and you're not getting no hair growth. And then you're chilling with your boys, or you've gone to go see a mate or whatever, and he's like, bro, you look really clean. What's happened? He's like, oh, I went here. And that was massive for us. Word of mouth was just massive. Um, we're getting... Every day we're getting calls, 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 saying, yeah, let me do it, let me do it, I want to do it, I want to do it, I want to do it. And then that was, I'd say, one of the biggest ways for us to actually build the business. Um, from that point, we decided Snapchat, Instagram, yeah. have everything separate. Because beforehand, we were doing it, you know, on personal Snapchat. Yeah. 
I'd say, yep, I'll, I'm at work or whatever. Um, we put before and after pictures up wherever we could. But it was all on personal snaps. And then we decided, right, what are we doing? Let's build a brand. Let's build an actual business. Um, and then I'd say that was the starting point for where we went forward. It's, it's become quite a trend now, isn't it? Men are trying to really take care of themselves. The male, the male market... It's just booming. It's it's gone so crazy in the sense where we, we say it all the time, if we did it, let's say two years um, prior to when we did, it wouldn't have been the same. At that point we did, it was just perfect. It was on the come up already. Um, obviously males started actually wanting to look better, wanting to feel, they realised looking better helps feel better as well. Um, so yeah, the whole market was just on the up. So we I'd say we got into it at the perfect time. Um, for that and then that helped just massively uh, we, we did as they give it a little push as well yeah um, did, did all the right branding built the brand mashallah and the results yeah i think i've spoken to a few people and they've said that they that they've uh, they've used you guys and uh, the results work and i think i've spoken to somebody off camera and they were saying they went to all the laser clinic didn't really get the results they wanted and then came to you guys and then it worked so you clearly got don't know if it's the right equipment or the right technique, yeah. but you've got something that other people are failing to, failing to do. Because if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. We, we, we focused on getting the machine, getting the right equipment. Um, it's just the investment in the technology. Yeah, because there's a lot to it. So in the sense of, you have different types of machines, right? Within laser, you got your IPL, you got your SHR diodes and medical grades and stuff like that, right? But then even within each of them, is the way the machine's set up whether it's for Asian skin tone, whether it's for um, white skin tone, there's for a darker skin tone. There's so many things that that machine is tweaked for that particular skin tone. So when we were getting ours, uh, like I said, luckily we had obviously my sister's clinic. So we already had a relationship and we knew these machines are wicked. Um, and keep in mind, obviously with my sister, we started doing it on ourselves. Yeah. And that's when we realized it's working really well. Um, so then we went and said, look, this is what we want this is our market uh, what would you advise uh, advise us so to the machine uh, yeah suppliers yeah to the suppliers and they um so the suppliers that we get it from is it's a it's a uk um based suppliers right they make all the machines in hand uh in their own place it's down south um a lot of the machines that people get they're all chinese made and it's just the cheap machines anyone can buy them there's a big difference to the type of machinery you buy for example, I could go on your phone now and I could buy you a particular machine that majority of the people use. Right. Right. Obviously, without bad mouthing anyone, but it's the easy option. Yeah. yeah, it's the easy option. It's cheap. You don't need no qualifications. You don't need nothing. Whereas, for example, if you went to our supplier now um, and tried buying them, you can't get them. You cannot get it. Um, one, we've already got anyone around here rings. <laughs> He's already going to pick up the phone and say, Some, someone's trying to ring. Yeah, have you yeah. got like we, exclusivity rights? And yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah. Have you, yeah? So, yeah, because we give a lot of trade. We wow. give a lot of business, uh, servicing and stuff like that. No way. Um, but he's he's said to us before, like a few times, like, oh, I've had lads from up your hands that are ringing for machines and stuff like that. But you wow. can't just buy it. You have to have the qualifications. It's a bit of a catch-22. Yeah, you got yeah. the qualifications as well. So, you can't buy the machine until you've got the qualifications. Uh, but you can't, sit the course until you bought the machine that's bizarre yeah so you have to put the money in right and then once you put the money in they won't release the machine until you've sat the course so then you go sit the course if you pass the course wicked they'll give you machines if you don't pass the course you do not get the machines or the money back no you will have to um reset the course which then it's obviously bigger cost it's not cheap um, in the thousands, yeah, right. Just to reset the course. Once you've passed the course, then they will. If you do not pass the course, and you think, you know what, screw it, I'm not doing it. We don't get money back. So it's not easy. Uh, you know, the barriers to entry in this industry is mm. not really easy, is it? No, it's no, no, no. Um, there's a lot to it. Yeah. But like I said, it it's good machines. They're the best best machines uh, machines you can get. So obviously, for getting stuff like that, there is going to be certain um, barriers in place beforehand like I said anyone can go buy the machines that a lot of people have and then uh, a lot of our listeners are always interested in number crunching and you don't have to you don't you know just uh, cut me off at any point if you don't want to reveal too much but uh, people always want to know about numbers profitability how much you can actually make 
from uh, an industry and a business like this or um, what's, what's it like in terms of profitability and uh, how um, much you can actually make once you are established? There's a lot to it and a lot of people will see cost that we put out yeah. in the sense of oh, a treatment cost X amount yeah. right? and they think to themselves right if they're charging that much they're busy all day long they're making some they're serious money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then what a lot of people don't realise is there's a lot of cost. Every month I'm paying around 1,500 quid just to service the machine. That's Every month you need yeah. to service it. Flip yeah. now. Every month, month and a half, give or take. Depends how busy you've been. Um, but yeah, it's about 1,500 quid. Service so every... Wow. That's more than a flipping... Yeah. The rent on certain places. It's more, yeah, yeah, it's more than a rent. <laughs> more than <laughs> yeah, a rent. I was say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But this is what I mean. A lot of people don't see the cost and that's just one cost yeah but it's interesting to hear that when i'm on a podcast with you because most listeners won't even know that as well yeah, so yeah. just to hear that is so intriguing even yeah even with those we were surprised um obviously look the busier the busier you are the more the machine needs servicing so the more cost that is. I just go to select some uncle or someone and just say, listen, no hundred pounds. Fortunately, yeah, you ain't got the parts. <laughs> <laughs> you got the parts on it. Yeah, yeah. We're in Bradford, man. You can get anything done. But I wish it was. <laughs> if anyone knows how to do it. <laughs> yeah, of course, man. Listen, even seven fifty, I think, is worth it. But flipping fifteen hundred, yeah, yeah, yeah. it adds a up, lot. It adds up because you got to keep in mind the, like I'm saying, the the homegrown parts. Yeah. So they're making them there and then, so these things add up. Obviously, when you go to certain places, you and they're mass producing these products you can get them a lot cheaper but when it's not obviously that's not the case um it is going to cost you more yeah and it's serious it is serious piece of equipment like where obviously you need to be we need to be careful on how we do it and stuff like that because it can be dangerous yeah and then any other whilst we're talking about overheads uh what other kind of overheads so you've obviously got the machine servicing you've got the uh we haven't even talked about this place but this place <laughs> is uh your latest place so you yeah. moved from Grey Horton to this place yeah uh, what in Godwin Street or Godwin Street Godwin Street 51 Godwin Street 73 73 oh, I went to go view 51 that's right <laughs> I'm shouting him out <laughs> yeah we went to go view one just for a for a little uh, a, a little check up. A, a little check up yeah so that was 51 so this one's 70 this 73 73 yeah. Godwin Street um, so when did you move into this place uh, so we've been here for about two years right. we were in the old place for about two years um, we 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 outgrew it. It got to the point where we had to get another place. Yeah. Um, we were at the we were at the stage where it's like right, we're a bit more comfortable. We don't need people walking through that little door Barbershop. anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's start looking. You ever get like any proper chubby guys that couldn't fit through the half door because they can only open half door? Like uh, no comment. No comment. <laughs> no, no. GDPR. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say because if if they can't. No, but it's it's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's true. Obviously. It's, they can't fit through yeah. the door and it only half opens then there was there was times where people are squeezing yeah 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 100 percent. there was times where people are squeezing <laughs> yeah. so hats off to everyone that that, that stuck, stuck that's through loyal customers <laughs> so you move to this place what's the difference like in overhead cost from that place because i'm assuming it was a lot cheaper than this place yeah. Yeah, yeah so that place um like i said it was one it was one room yeah in a sense it could have even just been like an office for someone um but yeah, the cost was okay on that. And then you come here. You come here, um, and we we was we knew what we were getting into. We, I'd say we knew what we were getting into in the sense of yes, the rent's going to be higher, yes, electric's going to be higher. Obviously, all these costs that that is going to be higher. Um, but we were willing to take that step because sometimes you have to yeah. be willing to take that step to move the brand forward, move the business forward. That's what takes you to a different level. Yeah. You've got a shop front, you've got lots of rooms, you've got upstairs, downstairs. It looks like a proper professional setup now. Thank you. So, um, and then obviously I'm assuming you have to sign like a longer lease as well. Like yeah. You have yeah, to commit yeah. to so a longer lease. Uh, we did have to commit to a longer lease. That was a breaking point. So, uh, Is it in the years though? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, so I can't exactly how long the lease was at the time um but to be fair we just had it extended just because we're comfortable um but we had a breaking point so worst case scenario yeah you can worst exit. case scenario we had a uh, one year breaking point that way even if we do decide you know what it's not working out or it's not the the perfect spot for us um so we could we could you can leave yeah yeah no, we can that's leave. quite good normally they're like three years and stuff so they yeah yeah no, so yeah so at the time we had one year breaking that's point. good we, yeah we kind of made it um we, we were quite stern on it because yeah. we didn't know we didn't know how it was going to be so we 
Alhamdulillah, the landlady is wicked. Yeah. Uh, we've got a really good relationship with her um, now. But um, yeah, so we just had to take that chance. Inshallah. So, uh, and we were talking about overhead. So you commit to this. Um, your overhead are the servicing machines. Uh, yeah. You've obviously got staff costs, maybe yeah. uh, wages, and then you've got the rent, electricity, um, and all the rest of it here as well. So, um, what would you say compared to running it on Great Horton Road, where it's a lot smaller compared to here? Would you say that adds a level of pressure, or yeah, or oh, definitely. Definitely. You have to hit a certain level just to break even, in it. Yeah. So with this is, I'd say the biggest difference was the fact here we've got more rooms, uh, more space. So with us, we, as you probably tell, we like to be quite um, not extravagant, but have everything looking nice. Yeah, it looks beautiful, mashallah. Yeah. So um, like that wall, that wall was only put on not long ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm getting the plug Eid. for this wall definitely. Yeah, not outside of yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, But yeah, so like that was just a plain white wall before. Um, so for example, obviously this is after, but we've got rooms, we've got space that, right, we need to do something, we need to, we need to get it going. So especially on me as um, being in-house, I need to figure out, right, cool, laser's going well, but I need to do, sort this out over here, and then I need to sort that out, and then this, and then this, and then it just never ends. With sorting everything out, obviously it's cost as well. Um, for example, like I was telling you, that wall, yeah, it doesn't look, it looks like, oh, it's just one wall and yeah. whatever, but there's a big cost to it um, to get everything up. Even um, little things like, look, if you've got a place for a year, two years, you need to redo it, liven it up a bit. Um, so th like I said, there's cost to that as well. Uh, I'd say, yeah, that was one of the biggest things, managing where we're putting our money and also saving money for future yeah uh, stuff as well and for entrepreneurs that are listening any sort of advice you would give them when it comes to maybe they're in a situation where they want to take that plunge and invest mm -hmm. into a retail outlet and a shop and go all in what kind of uh, advice would you give to them would you recommend it or oh yeah, yeah yeah yeah. i'd recommend it um have a look at the areas that you're going into will it work for you will it not um like for example, one of the biggest ones for us here was at the time when uh, we were at Greyhound Road, our biggest problem was parking. Around, yeah. On Greyhound Road, a lot of people getting tickets and stuff like that. Um, so when we were moving, one of the first things I said to my brother was, wherever we go, we need to have parking. Yeah. Right? Now you can start laughing because we haven't got parking. <laughs> yeah, I think anyone that knows uh, this location, I was going <laughs> to say to you, it's ballsy to move here because yeah. this is like the the part of town that people avoid, isn't yeah. it? Like uh, th anyone that knows Bradford, uh, what are we next to? TJ Hughes, uh, Mario's, Kurgit. Kurgit. Yeah, 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 yeah. So these are all people that from Bradford, they know you kind of avoid this because there's double yellow lines outside. Yeah. Closest parking are like odd spots. Yeah, I know you did a parking video. I did a parking video, yeah, because yeah. we had to. Um, yeah. So when we first moved, uh, no, sorry, when we were, my brother was looking at it, he sent me the listing, right? And I go to him straight away, no, it's a Bradford town, we're not doing it. Yeah. So there's going to be no parking. Yeah. Um, and then he goes, look, I can't write it off. He goes, let me just go. We'll go have a look at it. Right. It's ticked off then. Yeah. Um, he goes, it's done. At least we can say, yeah, we went, checked it out. It's not the one. Cool. Let's go. Um, he came. Him and my partner came, checked it out. And then he's, he's come out and he just texts me. He goes, we found a new spot. I was, I was in my head, I'm screwing. I'm thinking, hold on. That was the one spot I told you not to do. Yeah. <laughs> and he goes, um, so I rang him straight away. I said, what the hell are you on about? And he goes, we found a new spot. I am telling you, this is the one. Right. Obviously, he's looking at everything inside. Yeah, yeah, of um, course. Obviously, what we're getting. You can't follow it inside. Yeah, yeah, so what we're getting, like space and how it's set up and everything. At this point, I'm, I was in the old clinic and I'm screwing. Like, what have you done? <laughs> oh, now I've got, because obviously I deal with all the clients. Yeah. So I already get the headache from the parking on Greyhound Road. I'm yeah. thinking, right. I'm gonna get more more headache with the parking. Same. I'll be telling everyone yeah. that yeah, we're gonna no parking's one of our biggest yeah. um, things that we're looking for and stuff like that. And then um, so he goes to me, he goes over the phone, he goes, look, go down, check it out, see how it is, and then take it from there. I said, all right, cool. So uh, a couple of days later, we came down. As soon as I walked in, checked it out, and I just looked at him, go, yeah, it's the one. Yeah, you yeah, instantly knew. Instantly, it was like yeah. Perfect. Was it already like this, or did you need to do a lot of work? Um, we did, we did kind of rip it back. Yeah. Um, the par partitions and rooms were already up, uh, but we ripped it back, um, and then we redid it all ourselves, just so that obviously fresh plaster, um, repaint everything, and then whatever we wanted to do, 
um, little things we just did it all. And how has it been like with parking then? Uh, so the parking wise, how my brother put it was, it was quite well. He goes, look, if people are coming to us, right? If you're, let's say for example, Greyhound Road, people don't expect to pay a Greyhound Road because it's, it's Greyhound Road. It's a normal road. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the takeaways and every all the shops have made it busy, um, but it's a normal road. Whereas as soon as you say town centre, automatically you're thinking, right? Yeah, I need to pay parking. So in that sense, it's not bad. Um, when he said it like that, I was like, yeah, it makes sense. Because whenever I come, whenever I used to come to town, I know in my head if I'm going town, I've got any change, yeah. or am I gonna pay on card? I'm gonna pa- I'm gonna pay for parking wherever it is. So in that sense, it's not too bad. And you know what, Alhamdulillah, it was like, um, it, it flows real well. But there's there's plenty of parking around. Yeah, yeah. and p- if people are coming here, they'll come anywhere if they need to come to yeah, you for the service. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's and it's a unique brand, and there's not many of you around. It's not as if there's like a takeaway on every corner yeah. and you can just go <laughs> there. It's quite a niche business that you're in. So do you get like uh, customers that come in and talk about their whole life? Is it like that? I feel like I get that barber vibe kind of feel <laughs> where people come in and uh, yeah, how long yeah. are the sessions for? Are they like an hour? or? Um, they vary. They vary. So usually uh, for Cheeks and Neck, which is our, like I said, uh, most popular, half an hour. Yeah. Uh, but it goes all the way up to three hours. Wow. Sometimes even longer. So do you get people that come in and start talking to you about their whole life and everything I, that's going on? I know. Th- yeah, yeah. I know my clients. Uh, whole family, I know the the stories, yeah. um, the problems they have. Yeah, yeah, it's like, it is that, obviously, cliche, barber uh, kind of vibe in the sense where it's a therapy session as well. It's not because mental health, the men's mental health, they don't get to speak to no one. Yeah. Um, a lot of the males, they, they're working every day. They have to be the, the man and any problems they have, they, they have to hold it in. They can't go and... Uh, go home and start saying, "Oh, I've got this issue, this issue, this issue." Because sometimes the the problems are at home as well. Yeah. So you can't. If you got a problem with someone, so you're well, not going to go to your say, back under, yeah. yeah, yeah. This is the problem I got. <laughs> your missus is going to deal with you. Yeah, you are the problem. <laughs> 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 then, then you end up on the street. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I get that. So, what kind of themes would you say come up then from like people that come to you and speak to you? Like, what kind of things would you say that men go through? Oh, there's so many. It's a lot of it. I'd say is managing. Because managing your work, um, obviously any future ventures you want to do, um, any like home issues, there's so many things that come into it. And for them, it's, I think more than anything, is taking so much on and not being able to hold that through. Um, that does get difficult for a lot of men. I'd say, yeah, that can be a turning point in people's lives where for them it's like, it's too much. It's just too much. I can't do it. Yeah, no, of course. I think in this uh, generation, especially for a man, it's not easy to, because obviously as men, you have to be the providers. Uh, mm-hmm. You've got to pay all the bills. You've got to run a whole house. You've got to do everything. And I think in this uh, in this era, in this cost of living crisis, there's a lot of men that can't do that. So their wages don't live oh, up to, you know, yeah, the cost yeah, yeah, of living yeah. crisis. So, and then that causes like some kind of conflict because if as a man, you want to be able to provide and pay the bills and do yeah. everything a man should do. But if you financially can't, it just makes you feel like less of a man than you actually are. Yeah, I'd say in this day and age, we're at a point where one income cannot cannot um, look after a household. Yeah, for the average person. For the average, you can't do it. It's how you're meant to run a household. Some people are earning 1,100 quid, maybe 1,400 quid. Some yeah. people are earning less and they need to run a whole household on it. Just people's mortgages are that, that, amount, are that yeah. amount. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy, man. So for a lot of people, it's, it's difficult in this day and age. But when they've got, obviously, we, we come from an Asian background where our dads are working. Our mums, they stay at home. Yeah. Um, the dads provide, all the males provide. But obviously, you're talking 20, 30 years ago, it was, I'd say, easier in, the, in that sense um, compared to now. You've got car insurance that's through the roof. Everything's going up, but your wage... Stay going down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if anything, yeah, yeah, that is going down. Yeah. Um, people, they're, they're not giving you hours. Um, redundancies through the roof. People are losing jobs left, right, and center, and then they can't get jobs. And how are they meant to survive? It's it's uh, survival of the fittest. Yeah. And what would you say? What kind of advice would you give to to men that are going through that? Other than get the laser done and make themselves look good. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Uh, have a therapy session. <laughs> no. Um, it's it's about staying calm. Staying calm, staying collected. Because the problem is, if your mind's all over the place, right, and somebody might come to you with an opportunity, or 
you might have an opportunity yourself or something to you know make make it a little bit easier on yourself if your mind's running at 100 miles an hour how are you meant to think you can't do it um, so sometimes you just need to take a step back relax clear your mind and then have a look at the situation a lot of times what i say to people is yeah you're struggling you're in the struggle right but if you take a step out right and look at it from another person's point of view you're kushta you're good because their struggle is worse than yours that's usually how i tend to look at it so like even with me if i'm if i've got a lot of stuff going on here right and my mind's through the roof i kind of just think to myself you know what alhamdulillah i'm in a bit i'm in a better position than a lot of other people in the mm-hmm. sense of obviously i'm not just talking about the uk there's countries that are at war and stuff like that where y- you'd you'd I'd rather be where i am now with all the headache and everything and it just it just eases you out to the point where it's like you know what my problems aren't even problems if you've got 100 problems and you think like that 99 of them problems will be like what am i doing they're not mm-hmm. problems that makes sense and for yourself then would you say you've gone through any of the hardship or yeah um obviously as i was younger there was a lot of stuff um like i was saying it wasn't i wasn't the best of kids um yeah. there was a lot of situations where i would have avoided um but it was a struggle yeah. it was a struggle in the sense like like give us some situations <laughs> <laughs> you can see i'm avoiding it i know one <laughs> yeah bro go straight into it one. um give us a situation not many people know it okay right like my family and stuff don't know it yeah. i nearly got shot at one point no way yeah i had a gun pulled out um at you and yeah yeah literally aimed straight at me um it was a little issue not with myself uh with a mate of mine we've gone to go sort it out and then we were we were going to go as in look there's no problem let's just sort it out uh, <laughs> they went on that um they've come a lot of them and they kind of just came on job in a sense um hopped out and then they end up hitting my mate so me and my other mate have got just gone straight over him thinking that bro you're on the floor let's just stand over you nobody's hitting you um as we've done that one of the one of the lads he's pulled a gun out uh, he's pulled a gun out pointed it and then luckily um one of his mates just pulled him aside just put it down and pulled him aside and yeah for me as i said that was a turning point in my life as in like oh, i could have just yeah i could have got shot you don't know obviously how it's going to go yeah um but yeah that was a big big turning point in my life like, what, what the hell is going on what did the guy do to the guy to get a gun pulled out man he must have done some bad not even no <laughs> not even it was a misunderstanding okay uh, yeah it was just a misunderstanding where like i'm saying we went obviously there was only what uh four four of us five of us and it was always just a close boys we was gone as in like yeah let's just go speak to him and so yeah look there's no issue whatever whatever um obviously like i said they they were on a whole different wavelength yeah i think th- uh, that's an important lesson though cuz you know sometimes people can drag into situations that you don't even you're not even involved in or yeah, yeah. you have any saying in so there's been loads of instances where somebody's been killed and it's not even there they don't even yeah, do yeah, anything yeah, yeah. Uh, they just got dragged into a situation so surround yourself with good friends are you still friends with the guy yeah he's a good yeah, yeah, yeah. he's a good bit i'm going to hang up any shots bro <laughs> no, <laughs> hope he's watching the podcast no no he's a good kid he was what's he get like i said it was just a misunderstanding yeah, yeah. he didn't even do anything it happens no no that happens man but no that makes sense and i think for young listeners uh, just surrounding themselves with the right people and trying yeah. to avoid avoid certain uh, situations i think especially for lads in bradford yeah like yeah the young lads in bradford um it's not like it used to be before everything's on phones nowadays everything's um snapchat social media whatever whatever and a lot of social media is fake and a lot of people don't realize when you've got instagram you put that person posts what they want you to see not the reality so a lot of these kids they'll see things and it's easy to get hooked and you want this this lifestyle of glamour um of all the expensive things and stuff like that but they don't want to work that whole work uh, ethic has gone that our grandparents used to have and our parents uh, that they've got kids don't want to work nowadays and i think that's a big problem it's a massive problem within the schooling system where i think they want them that way um, yeah. where they don't want to work and for kids it's very easy to go off track so for anyone out there stay away from it man stay away it's not worth it yeah i think that's why we're trying to push entrepreneurs like yourself your you know inspirational to the youth in in Bradford and around the UK as well for people that can see somebody like yourself that got kicked out of school and then went on to start and run a successful business uh, which is going places so 
it doesn't matter about you know whether you get a degree or you get your education like it doesn't matter what cards you dealt with it's about how you turn your life around and uh, what you do with it in your time 100% but one th- one thing i'll say to uh, i even say to my cousins and stuff get your educa- education so important it's so important um even if you don't have a plan of going down the education route get the education right whatever it may be you have something to fall back on that's a massive thing and, and then do you feel like that's a regret for you yeah 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 100% if i could go back right i'd um i'd get proper education yeah and i'd have something to fall back on like <laughs> if you speak to my brother you'll he'll tell you uh, um because he's got education mashallah yeah yeah right uh, mashallah he's done very well in that sense so he's got something to always fall back on whatever he wants to do let's just say he wants to go completely different right he can go do it if it doesn't work out cool you've got something to fall back on it's yeah. massive i think education is so important nowadays yeah no it makes sense and again uh, whatever cu- whatever situation you're in you can turn your life around and uh, and start a business and i think one really good thing that you mentioned that i just want to highlight was you know when you said uh, you need to keep a clear head because opportunities might come your way and you might miss out on them the fact that your sister you know uh, was able to buy that business uh, she had a clear head at the time she was open minded she was you know uh, listening to the yeah. business yeah. owner so so for her for that opportunity to fall into her hands and then look at how it spiraled and look what is uh, what's happened since then so it just shows that opportunities are all around us and it's just a case of being open minded and being open to those yeah. opportunities yeah every every opportunity is what you make of it it's like i tell uh, everyone right is don't work for the money whatever you're doing don't do it for the money right do it for the like if you love it if you have a passion for it that passion will make you money so in the sense where if you're just jumping into something thinking yeah you know what this trade there's a lot of money in it but you don't enjoy doing it what's the point enjoy what you do right and with that with that passion the money will come just don't don't be looking at the money not everything's about money nowadays as well it's about comfortability it's about comfortability it's like with here now um little things if there's a janaza or something right i can make arrangements i can yeah cool i'm at the janaza you know stuff like this is really important if you're working a 9 to 5 and there's obviously with in, in our uh, culture and stuff if one of our neighbors aunties passes away it's a thing we go to the janaza yeah right but if you're working a 9 to 5 you say to them right i've got a funeral who is it oh it's my neighbors aunties this that whatever things say why are you going is it within your family is it your brother is it your sister no or are you not going yeah so stuff like that alhamdulillah we have the comfortability where we can do these things and say that's massive um for what you want to do as well going forward yeah you've got good flexibility and yeah, yeah you've got yeah, the freedom yeah. to do what you want that's when you it. want to do freedom, it yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and that's what the the business provides to you and uh, i think another key theme as we come to the conclusion of the podcast is uh, you've mentioned quite a few times that you know you uh, dean is quite important and uh, you split your sister's business and your business to make sure it's like male and female only a lot of businesses wouldn't really do that anyway so and then also the the only doing laser below the knees and uh, and and uh, all the rest of it so that shows that dean has played a part and uh, in your success would you say that's the case 100% 100% uh, alhamdulillah you know what we've tried staying away from interest right we took nothing on interest um Obviously, don't get me wrong, it's a lot more difficult if we were open to, for example, interest and getting loans and stuff like this. Could have had three, four, five shops open by now. Um, but Alhamdulillah, we'll, we'll stay away from it. We'll always stay away from it. Um, but even stuff like, like you're saying, from the belly, uh, belly button to the knee, stay away from it. Because why are you going to, if you've got a halal, a halal business, why are you going to openly go into haram, into it? You'll just ruin yeah. it. That makes sense, mashallah. That's really, really good uh, to put out there to the listeners. And have you ever had any uh, weird requests uh, for for laser <laughs> treatment or do you ever get speak, speaking <laughs> of halal haram? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the halal haram the, ratio. You know the amount of um, requests I get for down there. What like to laser? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To laser your private areas. Oh my god! No way. The from men. Our, yeah, yeah. From up near male. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Unbelievable. I'll right. tell everyone, if you want me to do it, 100 grand. <laughs> 100 grand? <laughs> as soon as they hear that, yeah. well, oh, I don't know. Oh. But, yeah. Um, so they want their private areas and their yeah, legs. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. and it's weird, man. I don't know. I don't know if it's just me or what, but, yeah, weird. No, it's crazy. It's yeah. crazy. And you'll be very surprised how many calls we get. 
and how many a lot of the times a lot of the um it's more so they'll do the treatment on the cheeks neck whatever they is right it's and really um, they realize whoa it's sick yeah right i've got no growth and stuff like this right yeah. like, do down there just do everything yeah. yeah do everything i was like no i'm not doing it no chance yeah <laughs> no chance. yeah that's like so they go from like the face to the full body yeah just uh <laughs> nah that makes sense mashallah no i think you're really inspirational um love meeting your uh business partners the anonymous anonymous, anonymous. ones mr <laughs> mr anonymous uh your brother what's your brother's name is he allowed to come what's his name sofian is he allowed is am i allowed to say his name on camera yeah or is he did he want his name off no he's fine yeah he's fine so your brother sofian a uh, really nice guy as well mashallah really down to earth really enjoyed having chats with him as well so big shout out to sofian um and yourself mashallah you guys are doing amazing i'll definitely pop Thank down you. at some point myself and uh, and get well, it done my only question for me was like you know how i'm trying to grow my beard a little bit higher is it like a I final can. thing once you get like no. your laser done you so can't go any higher can you so wherever you want it higher yeah I'll, i mark everything out anyway so for example even if you've got no beard right? or you'll yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. right we've okay. had people come with no beards right they're optimistic and yeah no <laughs> literally right they should don't they get clean shaved Okay. So they'll get they always get clean shave. Right. And then what we'll do is we'll mark out where the beard line is supposed to be or where it should be and then we just get it all ex- uh, excess. So that way when it does grow, obviously a little stubble that they have or whatever, it's nice and neat. It's nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah that nice makes sense. So it's just easy for them. Okay. And for any listeners that want to try and reach out, get some of your services, how do they contact you? Um so they can contact us phone number 0274900256. Uh, we're on TikTok, Snapchat, uh, Instagram, uh, Alpha Laser Clinic. Give us a search, you'll find us. Sure, I love that. You know, and you know what? We're always here. Yeah, seventy-three Godwin Street. Yeah, seventy-three. We're always here. You're not going anywhere. We're not going nowhere anytime soon. Uh, any future plans? What's what's the future for Alpha? Uh, future for Alpha. Um, like I was saying, so at the moment, obviously, is laser uh, hair removal that we're doing. We have just started hydrofacials, mm. and uh, we're going into teeth whitening as well. um and then going forward from that there's loads of things that we want to do but um we know a lot of clinics they they'll chuck out 100 new treatments at once yeah we'd rather go nice and slow uh, specialize in each one and then work on right okay next one cool once we master that one next one do it properly and then, yeah just do it properly so we're not rushing yeah um, we we're, we're here for a long time So I know I've seen your Google reviews you guys have got five star reviews alhamdulillah yeah, yeah everyone praises you and talks really highly of you so you must be doing something right and I think it's the focusing on the customer side uh, that really we we let the results uh, speak for themselves yeah uh, alhamdulillah Google reviews are very good um we've got full five star reviews uh, I can't remember exactly how many we've got hundreds yeah there's definitely over 200 I think yeah yeah um there's quite a fair bit but alhamdulillah yeah that's just um like I was saying word of mouth word of mouth um google reviews it speaks for itself the work speaks yeah mashallah that's really inspirational and uh, just some concluding uh, advice to all our listeners youngsters maybe that relate to your story because we try and get people on that are relatable I'd rather speak to people like you yeah. that I uh, get on with that's l- local relatable uh, that I can relate to so um anyone that's listening that wants some advice on maybe maybe they're at the chilling stage that you were at a few years ago and they want to try and start something up and maybe they're lost and they don't know what to do what kind of advice would you give them and maybe give yourself if you could talk to yourself back when you were just chilling don't jump in the deep end i know a lot of people say jump in the deep end i would have an idea uh, whatever however crazy it may sound doesn't matter have an idea figure out the plan how you want to do it and then just go step by step step by step there might be times where you're going three steps forward but you go five steps back it's cool do it again just keep going don't give up just keep going for it and right. when you take losses it do, yeah, like it's fine you can it handle happens. it yeah yeah it happens we we take losses here yes, it happens sometimes you take losses it's yeah. fine oh no, that makes sense no thank you very much for being on the podcast Uh, you're pleasure. representing Bradford and that's exactly what we're trying to do get people on like yourself that can represent the city and show different uh, different side from the usual characters <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> so uh, no it's really good I uh, think keep up the great work inshallah we'll definitely do a lot more work with you inshallah. and uh, and you'll be featured on the CEO Club Oman I want to see your success and uh, yeah no keep up the great work no I love it I, you know what 
I love watching the the podcast, and uh, it's a pleasure being here. No, no, I it's a privilege. It's a privilege to hey, be here. Hey, listen, you're, you're cemented into the CEO <laughs> club uh, legend from Bradford. So, no, Jazakallah. Thank, thank you. you very much for your time, guys. If you like watching that podcast, please like, subscribe, comment down below, and uh, we look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Thank you. Perfect.